Welcome back. Well, we're fast approaching the uh, rifle portion of the deer season around here, so I've been out sighting in my rifle just to make sure that it's uh, still zeroed in, which it is. Um, I'll be going out soon, and you know, if you go to the range this time of year, you oftentimes see uh, folks probably a little bit confused about what the sighting in process is. I see folks, you know, setting up targets at random, maybe at 50 yards or something like that, and, uh, you know, sighting in their scopes or their iron sights so that they're striking the target at 50 yards. And uh, that's, that's fine. Um, most of them will probably do just fine getting near deer uh, in here in the New England woods. But they don't realize that uh, with the rifle they're shooting, uh, if they're sighting at 50 yards or something like that at random, or even at 100 yards, they could be greatly uh, handicapping themselves for uh, that that long shot that might uh, come about, you know, long cross the cross a cornfield shot or potato field shot or something like that. Ah, uh, Benny. So we don't want to do that. We want to. Uh, we don't want to have the bullet going over the deer or under the deer or anything like that. We want it to strike where we want. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit of scotch here. We're not dealing with any loaded ammo or anything like that. So um, it's a beautiful afternoon. Uh, we're not going to have too many of these warm afternoons where I can sit out here at uh, four o'clock in the afternoon and have and have time with Benny uh, without getting a heavy coat on. So, but let's talk about the sighting in process and what it involves, so that you can uh, get the maximum out of your. Uh, rifle and I, I could be speaking about a 22 long rifle uh, for a small game or large game whatever it is uh, and if you understand the uh, trajectory of a firearm and how the sights uh, correspond with it you really be uh, much better afield so what we have here is a uh, open sighted 22 and I'm going to use open sights uh, simply because it's good to illustrate what's going on, but uh, the same applies to a scope. Your line of sight is above the bore line. Your bore line is down the middle of the barrel, in other words, where the bullet comes out. And uh, in an iron sighted gun like this, you know, your, your front and your rear sight is approximately uh, three quarters of an inch or so above the center of the bore. And that's how it's typically uh, stated in a, a trajectory chart. It'll say for iron sights, you know, three quarters of an inch above the line of sight, uh, line of the, uh, rather, above the uh, bore line. Uh, or it could be uh, a scope sighted gun, which is typically about uh, an inch and a half on average above uh, the bore line. Whatever it is, you should know what it is and uh, set your sights accordingly. But uh, although, this, although the front and the rear sight on this rifle appear to be approximately the same height, they're really not. In order to uh, maximize the trajectory of and to strike your target uh, with, with any uh, firearm, uh, the rear sight necessarily has to be higher than the front sight. And that's in order to uh, elevate the bore uh, in an upward direction. And let me explain what that means. Get out my... This isn't exactly a whiteboard like you see on the news at night, but uh, I got some illustrations here. Here we have uh, here we have a picture of uh, your what's called bullet drop. Now you'll see you'll see uh, different different lines stated in a trajectory chart, and sometimes you'll see what the drop of a cartridge is, drop of a bullet is at a given range. Uh, whatever that range might be out uh, to, you know, 300, 400, 500 yards, whatever it is. But you'll see what the, what the drop is. The drop is what is describing the distance between the bore line, in other words, the center of your, the center of your rifle barrel, which is a straight line. It's the difference between that and the bullet path, which drops below it. Now, 
obviously that's, that's not going to be very efficient in being able to strike anything because if you're pointing your barrel at something and the bullet is always dropping below it, you can't really hit it uh, by, any, uh, by any means whatsoever. You're always going to be below at any range. Now, why is that? Well, obviously, uh, it's a matter of pure physics. Your, uh, your bullet is being pulled to earth by gravity the instant that it comes out of the barrel. So, from the moment that it exits the barrel, gravity is pulling it down, and the secondary, the secondary cause on that bullet is uh, slowing the bullet down through the uh, thickness of the atmosphere. In other words, the drag on the bullet, whatever that drag might be, whatever your ballistic coefficient might be, will cause that bullet to slow down rapidly uh, as it uh, passes through the, the uh, atmosphere. So that causes, rather than a, rather than a you know, uniform curvature, it causes a parabolic turn of the bullet towards the earth. In other words, the, at first it comes out relatively flat, and then as it slows down more and more, it descends more quickly. So you have a uh, parabolic curve. And what that is, uh, what that is uh, doing is, um, requiring you to elevate your trajectory. So here's a simple here's a simple picture of what an elevated trajectory is. Now what we've done is we've just like just like a kid will uh, you know throw throw a softball, throw a baseball high into the air in order to get it to home plate. Uh, you're casting your bullet high. In other words, you're, 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 you're pointing your barrel in an upwards direction. You don't perceive it because, as I say, there's a, there's a very, very small difference between the uh, height of the rear sight and the front sight in this case, uh, but it's there. And the same with your scope. Your scope is situated such that the internal, the internal uh, optics of the scope is also uh, looking downwards. In other words, it's casting your, it's casting your barrel upward. That's, a, that's essentially what uh, elevating your rear sight does, or uh, raising your crosshair does. It, by raising the rear sight, you're really not raising the rear sight because the rear sight says uh, on the line of sight, what you're doing is you're depressing your rear of your gun so that it casts the bullet in an upwards direction. Very, very small amount, but it's there. Now, so let's take a look at that picture again. So you've got the bore line which is ascending and now your line of sight which is between uh, between your eye right here there's this there's a, got a little cannon here but your your eye is pointed toward the target you're elevating your bore line in an upward direction and you although your bullet is still dropping from the bore line it's being cast above your line of sight and it drops into the zero point. That's only part of the picture. That doesn't tell you too much when you go to most uh, trajectory charts that uh, will describe, uh, usually, they'll give you nothing but numbers to go by. So let's turn to the third picture here and see what those, see what those numbers represent. Here we have a little bit magnified image of what's going on here. We've got the um, the cannon has got a high front, a high rear sight, and it's got a relatively low front sight. The line of sight crosses the tops of those two sights, or it crosses through the optics of your uh, scope or your uh, red dot or whatever, you, whatever you're using for sighting pr uh, procedure. So your line of sight goes across your sights, and you're casting your bore line up through your line of sight, and that's the green line is your line of sight, so you're casting it up through, you're crisscrossing, and the bullet path drops uh, drops through, it, it actually is dropping, it, some people say, you know, your, your, your bullet is rising, your bullet never rises, it's always dropping, but it drops through the line of sight in an upward direction at the first intersection. Now that first intersection is a very, very handy reference point because that first intersection, if you're sighted in at a usable distance at say 200 yards or 250 yards or 300 yards or whatever it is out here, 
uh, maybe it's even a hundred yards if you're shooting a uh, lower, you know, a, a lower uh, caliber such as a 30-30 or a 45-70 or something like that, which has a, a shorter trajectory. Um, at this zero point out here between the first intersection and the sec second intersection, you've got a plus. You've got what's what's denoted in most trajectory books. It'll be it'll say either high. You'll be the high, or you'll be at a plus point. It may just simply give a, a plus symbol between parentheses or something like that. That's your high point. Between your, your gun, between your muzzle and that first point of intersection is called the low or the minus area. And that's also represented by a negative sign. So you'll see on a chart, it'll say, uh, it'll perhaps say at the, at the muzzle, negative, uh, in this case it would be negative three quarters of an inch. And then out at uh, 10 yards, it may be uh, negative half inch. And then at the, 20, at the 20 or 25 yard mark, it may just simply say zero. And then when you get beyond that, until you get to your zero, until you get to your extended zero point out at uh, 200 yards or whatever, that'll be in the plus. That'll be in the plus region. Once you strike your zero point, everything after that is again back in the negative, back in the negative zone. That'll be indicated as low or minus or a negative sign. Now, an important factor to remember is that you have between these two points of intersection, you have what's called the high or mid-range or sometimes midpoint trajectory. That does not mean the middle of the trajectory because remember this is a, a parabola and because it's a parabolic curve uh, that situates the, mid, the high mid-range trajectory somewhat uh, downrange from the middle of the uh, from the middle of that uh, those two intersections. Understand what you need to do in order to properly uh, have a good zero for your rifle. The best thing to do is to first of all determine what the what the size of your so-called uh, striking zone should be. If you're hunting deer and if, say you're out west and you want to maximize the efficiency of a uh, hunting rifle, you don't need to have, as I've mentioned before in a uh, in my uh, how to how to select a scope uh, properly. You really don't need uh, a, uh, any kind of device to calculate distance. You don't need to have uh, any kind of uh, BDC reticles or anything like that. They're fine. Uh, but you know, in the, in the haste of uh, you know, game shooting, you don't have, you don't have an opportunity to uh, get things all squared away like that. You, it's typically a, a point and shoot situation. You know, you line up your sights and get the shot off. Well, that means that you want to have a high mid-range trajectory such that on the body of a deer, which you are, this, is, this, is about, this is about the size of a deer's lungs from top to bottom, uh, 12 or 14 inches or so, you want to be able to just place your cross here without even, without even considering what the distance is. You know that, you know that the deer is uh, within the maximum range of your rifle. You want to be able to place your cross here dead center in his chest and if the high midpoint trajectory is such that it places the bullet four inches high you're still going to be striking his lung solidly and you're going to be possibly uh, you're possibly rupturing his uh, spine but you're going to be striking the lung solidly if it's in that high mid-range trajectory the midpoint when you get beyond the zero point the zero point would be where your cross hairs are and when you get beyond the zero point you're going to be down in the negative territory and you're going to be striking low in the lungs and you're going to be striking the heart, heart and lungs. So in any case, you know, a, a three, inch, three inches high, three inches low uh, will carry that bullet well out uh, to uh, ethical hunting ranges for most people. Uh, and if you really, if you're a great shot and you want to, say, you know, get your uh, 270 or your uh, 
seven millimeter Remington Magnum or something or your 280 Remington if you want to get that situated so that you maximize your trajectory you can set your midpoint trajectory at say six inches high and that'll bring you out to maybe 360 yards or so for your zero your, your zero will be dead on at whatever it is you'll have to consult the trajectory chart for the uh, the bullet that you're using the ballistic coefficient that you're using and also the speed of the you know the the velocity that uh, you have in your gun and also figure to your the length of the barrel most of your barrels in your charts are represented as 24 or even 26 inch long barrels so you've got to be you got to be conscious of the fact that you know a shorter barrel on a 22 inch gun will lower that velocity by 25 or 30 or 50 feet per second or so so that will that will uh, have a slightly negative effect but you want to be able to know that by striking by by aiming at the midpoint of that brisket that your bullet is never going to uh, is never going to be any higher than uh, the lungs and it's never going to be any lower than the lungs out to your known maximum range so let's just go over that one more time you've got your You've, you've got your muzzle and the bullet is cast up through the line of sight the first time that's your first intersection that's a very usable number because and take note of that when you look at that chart see where that is that could be at maybe 20 or 30 yards or sometimes could be 36 yards or something like that uh, in the military the m16 is typically sighted in at 25 yards or sometimes they used to say the thousand inch range uh, so you would sight in at 25 yards, and that would put your battle sights out to 300 yards or so uh, without having any adjustments. In other words, that would put the, put the bullet on a human torso uh, out to 300 yards or more uh, with the M16. That had very high elevated uh, iron sights, so that, that that changes, that actually advantages the uh, trajectory a lot. So be aware of what that mid-range trajectory is and set your sights accordingly uh, to maximize your distance. Now, so here in New England, I have, you know, most of my hunting is gonna be in thick woods. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be taking any deer, any shots at deer I'm gonna take is probably gonna be somewhere around, you know, 30 yards away or so, but, uh, you know, or less. Well, that means that that first point of intersection, I'm dead on. At 30 yards, I'm dead on. And if a deer happens to step out into a, uh, if, if he happens to step out into a meadow or out in a cornfield or something like that, or the other side of a potato, potato or a field, I know that all the way out to 325 yards or so or more, uh, my, my, uh, two, my, my uh, 257 Roberts is going to be dead on the money. So I'm going to be striking possibly at, uh, at, at 275 or 300 yards on my, uh, actual zero point, but it's going to it's going to drop uh, maybe down to 300, 300 and a quarter out to its maximum range. And at that point, then it's simply a matter of uh, easing the crosshairs up a little bit, never leaving his back. You never you never shoot off the deer. You never you never you know always. Like Jack O'Connor used to say, shoot shoot at the deer first, and if that doesn't work, shoot someplace else. You know, so always uh, never 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 put your crosshairs above. Uh, your target. Always try the dead center on your target first. You'd be very surprised. But by doing this, this maximizes your uh, your sight and range, and it means that you're never going to be uh, you're never going to be off target for the maximum range of your rifle. Does that work for a 30/30 with iron sights, or 30/30 mile and 336 with uh, with iron sight with a scope? On it? Absolutely. Uh, you just simply uh, use a different set of numbers instead of Instead of sighting it in so that your zero is uh, 200 yards, you might set it in so your zero is at 100 yards. And that places your mid midpoint trajectory somewhere around maybe four inches high at 50 yards. And it puts you, it puts you on target way out to about 125, 130 yards or so. So it's as simple as that. So keep in mind that you have two points of intersection. The first point of intersection you're going to be zeroed in. People don't know that many times they don't realize that they have two zeros. There's one very close to them, which is in the woods. Uh, I, I frequently have had, uh, you know, this discussion with people. They, they think that because they zeroed their gun at 200 yards, uh, that they're zeroed too far for where they hunt in the woods. Actually, they're, they're zeroed dead on the money 
uh, when they're in the woods because that puts the that puts the crosshair exactly where they want. Say a rabbit should step out and you want to clip his head off uh, to have uh, you know stick him in the pot at the end of the day. You can do that because at 25 or 30 yards, the crosshair is right where it wants to be. So Benny, what do you say? Oh, he's taking a nap. <laughs> he's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's been out. He's been out collecting ticks, and uh, we have to keep pulling ticks off him all the time. This is this this time of year until we really get a hard, uh, serious freeze. We're going to be uh, plagued with ticks. Bears are probably still out too. We've had we've had visits of bears uh, around the neighborhood here. Uh, but um, so far, so good. Uh, I hope this is going to be a good deer season. Uh, we're going to get out and uh, see what we can do. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you can uh, be alerted when I post a video. But uh, Benny and I will bid you adieu. And uh, he's got to be 10 years old this coming Easter. So uh, he's doing quite well. Thanks for your prayers. It uh, kept him going through this uh, his bout of cancer that he had over two years ago now. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, God bless.